me, especially uh, Dr. Kwon to invite me to be here. So I, I experienced the, you know, uh, the outpouring of the Spirit, you know, even in the East Coast, when I, you know, one of my members actually is the African. I, if not mistaken, is from Nigeria. I, just now, just now the, the brother, whether you are from Nigeria or not, huh? from Ghana. But I think that I like the dance, I like the dancing in the worship of the African because they are rhythm, they are so rhythmic. And somehow you see that, the, I just share with you the uh, testimonies, which is about these the Nigerian in my church, most of the days, I think it's uh, roughly around 20 years ago, uh, when I was still pastoring the church in Kwantan. And, uh, you know, the, she's a Nigerian, and uh, we are the AG Church, the you know, Assembly of God, which is, I think, is quite dynamic. And also, we are really be uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the, we sense that the, the mighty acts of the, you know, the God, even in many aspects. So we thought ourselves, you know, we are always moving through the Spirit. But somehow, after I encountered this Nigerian lady, the sister, and then one day, uh, because she suffered the mother's flu, you know, it's a depression for a lot of the, the women. Uh, so, uh, what happened is that she said that, uh, Pastor, I want to go to KL for a special African's worship. I said, don't you think our worship is good enough for you? You can be set free in any house as long as you just worship the Lord. You know? And then she said that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Pastor, our African worship is totally different. From your Chinese one, Chinese and Indian, Chinese and English and Indians one, you know, it's totally from the one. There was normally uh, I will see that Chinese or even sometimes Indians tend to be a bit uh, shy, uh, tend to be a bit shy, even though India have a so-called Bollywood of their dancing. <laughs> okay, but uh, compared with the African of the worship, this is a special lady. Who need to avail herself, and you know those, those of the days, and it's not so convenient to travel from Kwantan, you know, to KL. It's before the highway is ready at the time. So uh, she was there for three days. After that, you know, it's a totally different. You know, God really make a difference in his life, in her life. And she mentioned to me that uh, person, you know, as we were in the worship, we are totally. You know, we are totally touched by the Holy Spirit. I even cried before the Lord for many times, you know, throughout the three days of worship. And then, you know, I'm totally set free. Hallelujah. Can we give God a big hand? <laughs> a totally set free, she mentioned to me. Wow. So, this is my first taste about how is the African worship. So, I think... Uh, as we, we are the Chinese, we are, uh, I think we are Malaysian, I'm Taiwanese. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we should learn a lot of things in, you know, from African, you know, sometimes not only worship, but also the prayer. The prayer is so powerful. So, you know, even in Taiwan, in Malaysia, you know, many of the Africans of the, the pastors have been invited, they have come to share about the prayer. So praise God. Uh, so thank you again for Pastor, uh, Dr. Kwan to invite me to be here. So, he uh, asked me to uh, introduce myself first before I start her preaching. So, sorry, I found out that I didn't send to the sister in contact with me, Dr. Uh, sister Dan. So, sorry. So, I just uh, shared about myself, about my uh, post, just a very short about it. Huh? And the Reverend Paul Huang, who came from Taiwan, is a certified mechanical engineer and the holder of Master in Theology. And the my wife actually is the uh, uh, lecturer in, in the university for many years. And uh, Pastor Paul and the wife Cindy, Pastor Cindy, have been, uh, have been called to Malaysia for 28 years, seven years in Kwantan, one year in Kuala Tringanu, and the rest of the times, you know, all in uh, KL. I planted many churches. I even started many ministries. I started Tony Seminary Chinese Department also. So praise God. Uh, so uh, Pastor Paul is the founder and the dean of the Chinese Department of Chongming uh, Seminary Malaysia, advisor of the CBC Church PJ, board of di director of Revival Chinese Ministry International, and the board of director of Least Reached Mission. And through their trainings, in equipping, they have become a blessing to many churches. So sorry, I introduced myself as this. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, I really thank God uh, for giving me the uh, specials of the uh, in this season can be a uh, uh, can be a blessings of the many of my. Okay, they come from even from Japan. They come from Philippines. They come from you know from England. I see that the now is a season. The Lord is going to pour out His blessing, pour His mighty acts, even in nations. Hallelujah. And Saraban will be part of the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So today, the very shortly, I'm going to share with you about knowing the Holy Spirit and His work in us. But before that, I want just to uh, share with you that I just uh, joined the Grandfather's Club recently. Uh, my first daughter married to Malaysian. He's an English educated man, so, which is worshiping the SSMC, Methodist Church. And my son, the second one, actually married to American white. So currently, he's uh, doing the, uh, he's, uh, doing the electrical vehicles in the uh, United States. So we just uh, recently went to uh, United, uh, United States to Cleveland to attend my son's uh, weddings over there. And my daughter just graduated from the uh, university. She will be, uh, she will be uh, attending. She will be part the employee for uh, one of the, the biggest of accounting firm uh, in, in Malaysia. And praise God, the youngest one is a major in the contemporary music. So this is the, all my family, just to share with you further. So uh, today I'm going to share with you the, uh, knowing the Holy Spirit and His work in us. Okay, so today's uh, sermon outlines will be like this. And firstly, I'm going to share about during the seminary, we were birth in charismatic uh, revival in Singapore. And then the knowing the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, the work of the Holy Spirit in us. This will be a very simple message. Yet I pray that the, the, the meaningful presence of God and the profound the meanings of Holy Spirit's work upon us will be continue to be uh, uh, each one of us will be receptive about what I'm going to share here. And Donnie Seminary, that allowed me to share with you was birth in charismatic revival. And Donnie Seminary is an Asia Pacific Theological Association, ABTA accredited seminary. And the, one of your church members, actually, is, uh, you know, uh, one of my students is called Desmond, Desmond Law, uh, is from Chinese church. Uh, so, now we also, you know, we got many of the, the students come from the abroad, from different countries. So, the, uh, you know, the name toning, many people, especially for those who are English educated, may not be really understand what's the meaning of toning, you know. So, so the toning actually an original name because it started from Singapore. The name symbolizes eastern mountains. What do you mean eastern mountains? So, so during the those of the days in 1972, is during the revival in Singapore, and then the Singapore some of the, the the apostles during the time even prophets they begin to foresee that the now is a time for the Asia to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord is going to raise up many of the seminary who is a, you know based on the teaching of the charismatic movement and then many of people will be influenced will be touched so this is the, the meanings of the eastern mountains so it has the tagline is called the school of the spirit and the essence is charismatic non-denominational with a special emphasis on the word of god and the word of the spirit so tony was birthed after the revival of the Singapore. So the Singapore charismatic revival, as we see you know, even in the stadium, is packed with the people. Hundreds of thousands of the people packed there. You know, on those of the days, I think before that could happen, before the revival could happen, you know, a lot of the Christians there just uh, look very warm. <laughs> just live one Christian only. But somehow, you know, during the revival, you know, the revival, is, the, during the time is roughly very uh, you know, near to the revival seasons in Malaysia right now. So, uh, so the Singapore Charismatic Renewal is started in 1972. It's called the East Asia School of Theology. And then the ACS Clock Tower Revival, this is what you call, is started from a secondary school. Can you imagine, you know, 
the Lord wants to touch our young people. So that's why, you know, just, just now the brothers who is leading worship, you know, not just to train up, you know, train up as the, 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 the what you call as a soldier in the worship. Also, you know, <laughs> frankly speaking, you know, I see uh, a lot of the earth, uh, maybe a few very, uh, uh, very challenging because I uh, didn't come to my age already 60 over, you know. <laughs> 60 over, sometimes we want to jump, wow, want to sing, start singing loud and out of the edge. The maximum of your voice uh, sometimes feels very challenging, especially some people feel very shy. But somehow, you know, just sound, you know, I can sense that uh, the Holy Spirit is doing something marvel just in our midst. Can we just give it a big hand of the Lord? And then I see that the, even though the same, uh, the, the revival who has hit not only just in Singapore, but recently, as you are aware, is also happening in the United States, in the Asbury College. You know, they started from one college, and then they begin to, hundreds of the uh, college students begin to, you know, packed in their, you know, in their the auditorium. And until such a kind of time, the small towns are packed with the people. No, they need even the, the police to guide the traffic. So, do we expect that the, the Saranban will experience the same revival, even bigger? Yes or no? It sounds that you are not so interested. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, forerunners of the Tony had a special insights from the Micah chapter 4, verse 1. And he said that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and the peoples will swim to it. And many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways, so that we may walk in His, in his paths. The Lord will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So there are three very important things that the, the forerunners of the Tony Seminary, the, they really uh, can foresee that these things are going to happen in days to come. Secondly, uh, I think the first, first important thing is that the uh, End Time Training Institute, Tony is the End Time Training Institute to usher in the revival. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And the, what is the reason why the seminary you know, exists? Why? It's because what you partner together with the church. Not so much of those who are, you know, the, the doctrinals, even they are so sound, but sometimes you see that the, they're so rigid in a lot of the denominations. But I see that uh, you are the, you know, the, the church of really filled with the Holy Spirit. They want to follow the ways of the Lord in this season. Can I say amen? Amen. And secondly, to reach out to nations. Reaching out to nation. So a lot of my students have now already become, you know, the missionaries, the marketplace, even cross-cultural, different places. So I personally is a missionary, cross-cultural in Malaysia for 28 years already. I'm also in the second round of my ministry. Before that, I planted several churches in the East Coast, you know, which is the very uh, least rich that people, you know, during the times of. So... I can say that even the revival hit the whole, the east, uh, uh, what they call the uh, east coast. The three states, that Kuala Tringanu, even you see that the Kuantan, even the, uh, you know, even Kuala Baru. This is very hard ground. But somehow, because of the mighty way of the Holy Spirit, after the, you know, the camp, we have a three days, ga uh, three days of the gathering in the, the you know, Christians from the three states they just joined and they experienced what a mighty wave the Lord is doing during these three days that came. Many of the young people, you know, they can't even sleep. Why? It's because they suffer. It's not because they, can, they suffer insomnia. It's because they are so excited. You know, in the camp, they can't, cannot even stop. For three days, they cannot sleep. Why? Because they enjoy the tangible presence of God. Can you see amen? Ah? Hallelujah. So, and we also, because we are seminary, we actually emphasize on the so-called the charismatic theology. Uh, okay? So, this is the Malaysia Donings uh, training course. Actually, we want to prepare the church for revival. This is the, the, uh, this is the picture you can see. It's the, located in Subang, Jaya. Okay? So, uh, please just join us for, for the School of Ministry 2023 online. This is the, the just passed already. 
But uh, sorry, this uh, the the onsite one already already uh, already just ended. But this one actually is a is an online one. You can just you know just log on. You can, you can just register. You know, our you know our lectures are come from the nations from different places, Singapore, even from England. And, you know they really the sharing really touch and you know to raise up many of the students. We also provide not only just the certificate level school ministry, we also provide diploma and bachelor of ministries, like the pastoral intern program. You know, so we have the lectures from the England. We also from the, some lectures from even from the local, from the India also. So the diploma bachelor of the ministries, and this is our on-site class. You can see that, and Pastor Hong Sing, who sits as a chairman for. NECF is one of is our uh, board of directors in Tony Seminary. So we also provide the Chinese one. Chinese training, we have the uh, also uh, a school ministries of the training. Also, we have the different prominent of the lecturers and even pastors, you know, from nations, praise God. So this year, uh, just now, we, are, uh, we also have the like, lecturers from Hong Kong, from Taiwan. They are very, uh, very good of their lecturers. So this is the uh, advance of the theological training for those who already been trained as a disciple in the church. So hopefully Dr. Kwan can you know, just you know, uh, send some of your members uh, who is uh, very appropriate for the, uh, the, the training. So praise God. Okay, so the second part of uh, my sharing, we'll be talking about the knowing the Holy Spirit. Uh, can you just uh, say it with me? Knowing the Holy Spirit. Is knowing the Spirit very important? Yeah, Bible serves as the best handbook in our life. Like in John chapter 14, verse 26. Can we just read the Bible together? Uh, 14, uh, John 14, uh, verse 26. Say it. Okay. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, when the Father will stand in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So, advocate means what? This is more of the so-called law terms. Uh, you know, it's like uh, Dr. Kwa is a specialist in the, you know, is in the, uh, in the medication. But the, the advocate stands like the terms for the lawyer. So, he is the comforter. He's a counselor. He's a, com he's a comforter. So, uh, being an advocate in the sense that he's just like a person, the parallelos. This is the original uh, Greek terms. It's called parallelos. Can we say that again? Parallelos. Parallelos. What do you mean, para? Para means the stands beside me. So, as we journey, you're not, you're never, never alone because Holy Spirit is journeying together with you. Can you say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Dr. Kwan may be sometimes very busy. He cannot always journey with you sometimes because, you know, he's uh, so busy like, in a clinic, but somehow he wants to spend his time in pastoring the church. Uh, can we just give him a big hand? Hallelujah. He's a very good pastor. Thank, thank Pastor Kwan, you know, willing to shepherd your flock. And then we see that only Holy Spirit is 24 hours available. Hallelujah. 24 hours available. Can we say it together? Is Dr. Kwa? Or Holy Spirit? Wow, praise the Lord. He can anytime, anyhow to cry out to Him. So, He's the advocate. He's a converter, He's a counselor, He's the converter. And the twofold of the purposes of Holy Spirit in our lives. Firstly, salvation. And then secondly, leading a holy life that is serving with the strength. Let me share with you uh, about my salvation. Uh, you know, I used to be an uh, engineer. But before I was an engineer, actually, I'm also, praise God, by the grace of God, I'm the top student of the university. But somehow, you know, it's the, it's the so-called of the uh, stick neck to the people. Very hard to receive the Bible. But sometimes, you know, I'm so questionable. I'm part of the you know, Buddhism. In the society. So I want to question about a lot of the, the pastors for their doctrinal issues. You know, I begin to try to uh, question them, challenge them, until a lot of pastors really feel quite fearful about me. You know? So I'm not the, 
And that they kind of person is uh, you know, so welcomed by the church because I always uh, challenge the pastor. But somehow, the Lord just, you know, gave me a very special encounter with you, with the angel. You know, when my, my, my mother, the time age was a cancerous patient. She suffered the cancers for uh, roughly around the two to three years. And during the time that Taiwan uh, men need to go for the national service. You know, normally we have the, not the, not the Malaysia, normally it's just two months, and now even stopped already. Not loads of days, we have the two years time. You know, I've been driving the tank, you know, the army tank, I can drive the army tank. I carry the machine guns, the all kinds of things. We are wheelchair and things. So that's why just now, you know, I can uh, dahan. I can uh, dahan the training of the brother worship leader there. <laughs> Uh, brother, thank you for your training today. <laughs> okay. So, the, so um, the kind of hard not to the people, you know, very hard to really to receive the, the gospel. But somehow because, you know, my mother's issue, my mother was a cancer patient. And one day, you know, I was the go out for jogging to exercise before we went for the, the national service. Uh, during national service, every day we have to, you know, we have to run for the uh, five k's of the meters, you know, every day, and uh, carry the guns. Uh, we have to run like that. Uh, so, uh, so just uh, one day, my mother just uh, say, shared it to me. She said that you know I encounter angel. My father, my mother is a very strong Buddhist, but somehow she experienced the angel. The angel just uh, visited him. So I, I was just a uh, question her. You know, are, are you crazy? I don't think so. Uh. But somehow, you know, after that, you know, my mother, after she passed away the time, the same day, you know, I was in the national service, and I was on guard in the, from time of the 3 to 4 a.m., not p.m., <laughs> 3 to 4, we have to stand in guard, you know. And then uh, I suddenly I saw the heavenly horse just, uh, you know, catch my mother up to the heaven. Wow, you know, I saw with my eyes, uh, hey, but... But before that, before that could happen, I, I just want to share with you. I'm not even saved, you know, during the time. I'm not even saved. But the Lord just proved to me, He is real. And He is faithful to my mother, who is so simple, who is so really simple to Him. Wow, even though my mother is a very strong Buddhist, but He comes to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. So for those who today, especially the, our newcomer, may the Lord bless you uh, mightily. Amen. Praise God. So this is my story about my salvation. Anyway, so uh, if I continue, it will be the other one I want to share. Okay, so, and uh, not only salvation, this is the twofold of purposes of the Holy Spirit in our life. Secondly, also, we will be led by the Holy Spirit to lead a holy life and serving with the strength. Okay, so, thirdly, allow me to share with you the work of the Holy Spirit in us. There will be several points. Firstly, the Holy Spirit come to convict us. Can we can we just say it with us? Okay. The Holy Spirit come to convict us. Can you say it loudly? <laughs> Maybe you are not so confident with the word convict. You know. Let me share with you about the the, the story. Uh, when I was a pastor in Kwantan, I got many members, but somehow you know, there is a member. Who is a heavy smoker? You know, she can't, uh, he can't stop the, the smoking for at least uh, 20 years already. He's called a heavy smoker. And, and uh, so in my uh, journey as a, his pastor, sometimes he see my ministry. She would, she said, he said that I would like to follow you, pastor, as you go to different places. I want to follow you. I said, it's good. It's good because, you know, just along the way, I can share about my life story to him to impact his life. And then one day, I brought him from Kwantan and traveled for two hours from Kwantan to Dungun. Anybody have the concept of where the Dungun is? Maybe have no idea. Dungun is roughly around two hours of driving from Kwantan further, further up. So, uh, you know, as we, uh, the people of Dungun, the church is the church full of a lot of businessmen. So uh, uh, over there, a lot of the uh, businessmen are so close to me. So I brought this uh, businessman also. This brother Jeff is also a businessman. Okay? So I brought him all the way to Dungun. And then when, after the preaching of the service, suddenly, suddenly he came across one of the, his 
business plan. He's a developer. You know, in Dong Gun. Then he said, oh, how come Ah Eng you're here? And then the other one said, how come you're here? And then uh, my uh, church member is called Jeff Eng. Uh, Jeff Eng. Uh, uh, so this uh, developer friend was uh, asking him, I don't know you are Christian. <laughs> Because uh, he's a heavy smoker, he did not to share gospel, even with his uh, business man's friend. So, dear Christians, dear brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes uh, if we are some, uh, in a certain part of us, our life has the dark side, we dare not to reveal it to others. Sometimes we will feel so bound that, you know, we are not so really set free to free enough to share with the peoples. And Jeff Ng was one of the examples. So he felt very embarrassed when he's a business friend, friend you know, even though you know, he, is not a, he is not a Christian. I mean the developer is not a Christian. But because the Dongun Church is so, uh, uh, so uh, desperate to share the gospel to a lot of the community peoples and get him safe. So when he came across the Jeff Ng, he said that, I saw you to uh, you are a heavy smoker. You, you smoke as uh, you smoke before me, uh, you know, every time, sir. So I don't know you are the Christians. <laughs> he said. He said that I feel very embarrassed because before that I'm just a lukewarm Christian. I'm a nominal Christian, uh, but right now I already repented. You know, he said it before me. I already repented, and from that day onward, you know, he begins to change his habit. He's never, never become a heavy smoker for the glory of the Lord. Amen. So sometimes, and you know, you bring your disciple and go out to minister to other people. It's one of way, you know, for him to experience the breakthrough. Can you say amen? Uh, secondly, can I allow me to share with you to, uh, the Holy Spirit to regenerate and renew us. Regenerate means to cause us to be born again. Correction and restoration. Uh, so, uh, uh, Holy Spirit, He saved us. The Lord saved us and not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth. Wow. This means a regeneration. Rebirth means a born again and renewed by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, allow me to share with you one more uh, one more of the story about my church member. This is a church leader. But somehow, you know, I spent a lot of time to really build it up as a, di as a disciple. Somehow, you know, because some of the misunderstanding, he, begin, he decided to leave our church. Wow, you know, I caused, you know, it's really like the, the, the life, it's like, a, it's like a life just appears into my, my heart. I'm really suffer. I'm really near to suffer. So he left, she, she, the whole family left the church. And what happened later, I, allow me to share with you, you know, because, you know, during the times, because they are so, they feel hurt, I'm sure, I'm sure, I also feel hurt. And then uh, my, because they have, they got five children. They got five children, they are so daring, you know, five children. And then uh, our Sunday school, Sunday school teacher just went to their home to bring their children to the church, even though when the parents are still absent from the church. So for two years' time, non-stop, every Sunday. Wow. So you see, the, uh, you know, the children still attached with the, with the church. Their lives still, you know, uh, continue to grow. But it's not with either the parents. So the parents, one day, they see the changes of the, the children. Uh, they say that, I want to go to church, but not to come to your church, Pastor Wang. I don't want to come to your church. Uh, and then I said, it's okay. Lah. Never mind. Lah. You go, just go to any church if you like. Huh? But I really pray that you know, he, they will encounter the Lord. And then they went to Gabon, one church. Uh, you know, before they want to go to that church, the church decided to close up on the same Sunday. And then they said, that we will never open again. <laughs> well, they said, how come, you know, the time we decided to go back to church, now the church is even closed. So I, so I begin to share with them, you know, the church was closed before because of you. <laughs> before the, because the Lord wants to bring you back to your home. The home is our church. They feel very, you know, stubborn, you know. They say, I don't want to come back to your church. 
but somehow they go to the other one, close again. <laughs> it's so amazing, you know. It couldn't happen. But somehow, this is uh, the story really happened to them. And then they just you know, feel very uh, a bit embarrassed, just come back to the church. But anyway, all our members said just hug them, embrace them, even though after they disappear for two years' time. So after they come back, they begin to build up, I send them to Dongin Seminary, and then their life has been changed. And then, you know, they come back to the church, they begin to preach the gospel, to share the gospel to all the in-laws, and, you know, they manage to get at least 30 people to save them. Wow, praise God, you know. We don't only have the special training to how to do the evangelism. So praise God. So now they, they are, you know, they are become, become like a wrong pastor of my church. You know, they are pastoring, you know, a group of the people more than, you know, more than just the uh, three or four cell groups. Uh. So praise God, they are still, uh, you know, they are still the, the working people. They are very busy. But now they are very uh, faithful to the church ministry. Now they even, they reconcile with me. They call me as a spiritual father. Hallelujah. They hug me. Recently, I just visited their family. You know, they have five children. They all hug me. All five children all hug me. So don't feel bad. Sometimes you may feel frustrated in, you know, down the road in your ministries. But, you know, somehow the Lord is doing some of the, the mighty ways of, the, you know, doing restoration. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the third thing, the Holy Spirit has come to deliver us from the dominance of sin and death. Is quoted from the uh, Bible, Romans chapter 2. Can we just uh, read the, the scripture together? Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and, and death. So, there are two things very important here. Uh, two laws. The first is the law of sin. The second is the law of death. You know, actually he said, whether, whether you like or not, the law of sin and law of death, ever since, uh, you know, uh, Adam's downfall, and we see that the law of sin and law of death begin to control their life. So that's why everybody, whether you like it or not, we will be facing the judgment. We will be, we will be you know, die once. But for the Christian, you don't need to, don't need to die twice. Why? Why? Why for the Christian, you don't need to die twice? That once means, you know, you know, after you come to the end of your life journey, you have to, uh, you have to die, ma. I'm also the same, ma. But how come you need to die twice? Because for those who, who will be facing the eternal judgment, they will be facing the so-called this as a penalty. But it's a loving penalty from God. Because God has been waiting for us for years. This could be, you know, waiting for me for 20 years before I can come to know Him. Wow, God is so patient. But somehow, you know, He gives us a green light. Doesn't mean, you know, every time it's green light. Sometimes, you know, it's the, it's could be, uh, it could be yellow, it could be red. But somehow we just don't know, we don't, don't want to pay attention to that. So the law of sin and the law of death actually started from Adam's fall. And then it's originating, it's originating from the sinful nature. And meaning that uh, sometimes because we're subject to the law of sin, so we are always doing what we don't want to do. For example, you know, we know we have to take care of our, our ch children, take care of our parents, but sometimes uh, you just don't want to do because some of the issues, you know, in between of you, maybe you have some of the so-called uh, spirit rejections. Uh, you're so rejected so because of when they uh, brought you up you know, in your childhood, I am just like that person, you know, my, my father was a soldier. So sometimes just came me, you know, just buy me to the season, you know, came me, wow, like mad. So I just want to, you know, really reconcile with my father during the first year of my uh, Christian, uh, Christian's journey. Uh, so because I feel so rejected, I feel so hurt, you know, how can I just reconcile with my father who really came me every time he came me, you know, because last time I used to play the basketball, you know. Like he see my play basketball, he just, you know, pierced that and then just break that. Wow, you know. I don't like my father during the time. But somehow, Holy Spirit just convict me. He said that you have to reconcile with him. And then, you know, I feel so uh, struggle with the one you do. So I fast and pray for at least three days. So eventually I say, 
uh, I say to Father, during the time my father, he has to be a Christian. I say to him that the Father, uh, he, uh, you hurt me so, so bad, you know, but somehow because now I'm a born again Christian, I want to say I thank you for chastening me, <laughs> even though I feel very hard. Uh, so uh, I would rather to be a loving father, but even right now I see, because I see the embracing of the Heavenly Father with a loving hand. So I'm willing to say that the, you will be my loving father. I want to reconcile with you. My father began to help me. It never happened. You know, where the soldier hug his child, never, soldier never. They were taught not to hug their parents, to hug their children. Wow. So this is my story. How do I reconcile with my father? Uh, if any one of yours uh, some of the, the issues with uh, children, even with your parents, in-laws, pray that the Lord can bring a breakthrough in your life. Okay, so, uh, yeah, number four, Holy Spirit here to guide us into all the truth. Yeah, in John chapter 16, verse 13, can we read the, the scripture together? But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears. And He will tell you what is yet to come. He will guide you into all the truth. Okay. Allow me to share with you about the principles for the bamboo's growth. It's based on the, the Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. You know, bamboos are always that we have to use about four years to grow. But even though during the four years' time, you only grow for three centimeters, only three centimeters. Okay. Can you say, that, say actually together? <laughs> let little, let little, only three centimeters only, okay, for four years' time. But started from the fifth years, the bamboo is going to grow in a very high speed. Uh, so every day, daily will be 30 centimeters. They will grow very fast one, like crazy, you know. You just use only of the six weeks time. They will grow until like uh, 15 meters. Wow. Can you say it together? Wow. But, but normally we just see that, how oh, come, you know, my ministries, uh, and sometimes my children, even, you know, the, my, uh, my uh, cell members, sometimes I feel very hard, you know. They have been years in the church already, still lukewarm, so you don't want to move, and so on and so, uh, so forth. A lot of things maybe will be murmuring. Uh, will be even questioning God, question even uh, Dr. Kwan. <laughs> How come the things happen to me? You know? But, dear brethren, okay, so, can we just uh, learn from the bamboo? The first four years, the bamboo only will grow, you know, three, just uh, three centimeters. Four years, you know, four years time. But the but at the fourth years, then because the, you know, the bamboo begins to outspread all you know, the, the root to at least, uh, uh, I think, the hundreds of the square feet, the whole areas that he will spread out the root. So, you know, this is a time when bamboo begins to root it. You know, it's also the same for Christian. It takes time to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Sometimes to worship very fast one. But we see that a lot of Christians don't want to spend the time even to do the devotion. They don't like the exegesis like Jesus the preaching. <laughs> okay, so you see, uh, sometimes uh, as far as the charismatic is concerned, you know, I am in the charismatic church in the ministry for so many years already. A lot of us you know, want to worship, want to pray, but when it comes to the preaching, I uh, nothing. <laughs> so, so, so it's because what? Because we are not really converted, convicted that we need to be grounded and rooted in the Word of God. Can you see? Amen? amen? Praise the Lord. So, we even though we have a humble beginning, but we will achieve great for the Lord in the end. Amen? So, 
So the word of God is the foundation on which he's, we stand. And if we weaken the foundation, we will collapse under the weight of sin and fail to live a strong and a fruitful life in our journey of faith. And bamboo plants actually have the uh, have an underground network of orientation stems that help the bamboos to establish a strong root system. This is what just now I was sharing. And then number five, okay, can we say it together? Number five. Number five, the Holy Spirit can bestow life upon our mortal bodies. Can we say that again? Holy Spirit can bestow life upon our mortal bodies. Okay. From Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life. He said, so the, I highlight this word with the red color. Also give life to your mortal bodies. Sometimes because of these, uh, you know, disease or even sometimes because of aging, you know, our bodies become like, uh, you know, mortal bodies. But somehow the Lord can do something to, Holy Spirit can do something to quicken, to vitalize our mortal bodies. Can we say amen? amen. It's a good news even for those who are suffering the diseases, for those who are aging. Uh, can, you, can, I, can I just see the hand for those who are about 60s like me? I'm already 60 over. <laughs> Okay, uh, so this is good news for you, you know. Holy Spirit can quicken your mortal body. Can I, see, can I hear a big amen? amen? Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. But I'll be to share with you about the story, you know, happened to uh, one of my church members in Kuala Turinganu. Those of days are 20 years, 20 years ago. It happened to this brother Yong. Brother Yong actually is uh, uh, previously actually come from Ibo. And uh, he's uh, doing the business in the, doing the business in Kwatuigadu. But somehow, one day, he just uh, suddenly, he suffered, suffered the very critical of stage of the lung cancer. Almost died in the fourth stage already. I think as a doctor, you'll be very aware, even for the ordinary people who know that fourth stage is dying already, isn't it? So, uh, I think he already think that he already come to the dead end already. In the, the wife, because uh, last time he's a very strong Buddhist, he even, you know, from childhood, the wife stayed in the temple. I mean, in the, in the Buddhist temple, <laughs> not the church temple, <laughs> in the Buddhist temple. He was brought up in the temple. So they are so resistant, you know, to the gospel. They don't want to hear the gospel. But my church elder, who is also a businessman, a charter accountant, you know, availed himself to go and preach the gospel to him. But somehow he was expelled. He was chased out. <laughs> Uh, chase out from the home because they do you know you know I stay in the temple oh, you Christian you know I have no nothing to do with you so but you know before my church order left his home he just shared to him uh, dear Mr. Young can you just try out one things when you feel very struggle very suffer you just cry out to Jesus say save me Jesus save me Jesus and he just, you know, went off. Then one day, when he comes to a very critical, you know, he really suffered. You know, he even, you know, rolled down even from the bed <laughs> to the ground. Wow, very suffer. And this is the last words from my church elder just uh, come to his mind. He said, cry out to Jesus. I don't even know who Jesus is. But somehow he tries to utter in a very weak voice to the you know, uh, to the Jesus that he not really acquainted with. He said, Jesus, Jesus, help me. Save me. Suddenly, you know, he saw the angel came to his help. Can we give the Lord a big hand? <laughs> we will never come to the dead end. Even yes, we are quiet to him. He is our timely help. Amen? So, this is a story about the, the Lord really bestowed a life upon him and something even marble happened as he cried out to the Lord. He begins to, you know, to pass out all the, you know, uh, all the blood. Uh, the blood has been piled up, you know, like a solid already. Piled, you know, released already. 
just over two, two days' time. He was totally healed. And he went to the hospital. You know, the specialist was asking him, what happened to you? He said, I don't know. I just passed out a lot of the, those the, the things. And, you know, now uh, I'm okay already. He said, what happened to you? He said, because I cried out to Jesus' name. <laughs> He's whistling to the specialist. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can you imagine, you know, a patient can witness to the specialist doctor. <laughs> uh, so Dr. Kwa got a very to preach, to share the gospel to a lot of the patients. It's the other way around. So number six, the Holy Spirit can come and empower us to serve. Holy Spirit can come and empower us to serve. Sometimes, you can I imagine, you know, we need the Lord empowerment to serve. Because in church, even, uh, you know, members come from different walk and different sectors. Uh, they will be faced a lot of challenges, even though sometimes when you are the cell leader, you find it very difficult. You, are, you, you yourself are so busy already, and then you have to come to shepherd them. <laughs> so it feels very challenging, you know. Later, I'm going to share with you about the, the story of my youngest child. It recently happened to her. She just had a very uh, the, uh, critical of the car accident. Okay, so uh, this is what the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, 8. And can we read the Bible together? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay, like the Deuteronomy's generator. You know, it's, when you see that, the power, this word means what? You know, it means uh, dynamite. The in English means dynamite. In Greek, original means dynamis. Can we say it together? Dynamite. What do you mean dynamite? If something can be explosive. Wow. Like green nade. Wow. wow. So, this is the so-called, so uh, Greek original is called the dynamis. It's like a generator. So, I, last time I got uh, one pastor friend, is called the pastor dynamis. He's an uh, Indian. He called himself the pastor dynamis. Praise God. Hallelujah. Always carry the bond. <laughs> He's a terrorist. <laughs> okay, so somehow, you know, uh, I cannot share with you just my, one of my stories. When I was the uh, plant the other church in Kota Damansara in KL. So uh, in 10 years ago, in the, during the time that because we just had the very humble beginning, we just had only have the three members. Sorry, uh, you know, one, my family. My family got the six members and the other three. Uh, the other three. So all together, we we'll, got we'll only nine. <laughs> Started with a humble beginning. So with this kind of the challenges, and you know, just nearby our church, all got the mega churches, and you know, how could the church grow? But somehow, you know, because you know, the Holy Spirit is the dynamite. Wow, He can do something great. You know, I, one day, uh, you know, uh, normally we just intentionally to visit some of the stores uh, like Pasar Malam now, uh, to go to some of the, the stores to buy some things. And every day, we want to make the friendship with them. So the, we just build up the relationship with them. One day, you know, I just uh, pass by, want to buy, you know, some of the uh, like seafood uh, from that special store. And then I was wondering, how come, you know, the boss is not around? Then the wife had begun to tell me that, oh, wow. Uh, he said, Pastor Paul, huh? uh, my husband just admitted to Asunda. So I was saying to him, uh, saying to her that the, uh, Asunda, can I just pay him a visit? I want to visit him. And then, you know, he say, uh, uh, he say he very courtesy way, la, because that, those doesn't really know us too, too much. But they think maybe I'm just uh, kidding, you know. I really pay a visit together with my wife. And then, you know, two persons pray together. Wow, you know, we see the power of the Lord. He has been there, and the, the sugar, uh, the blood sugar has been, you know, it's factory, it's been too high already. And then the doctors uh, you know, cannot do the operation upon him because he was suspected to be uh, like a uh, uh, diabetes of patient. So he was there for two weeks already. The, the, the sugar blood is still very high. So they cannot do anything. So the afternoon, I went and visited him. The time I lay hand upon him. He's a non-Christian. Come now. He's a non-Christian lay hand upon him and then straight away you know after one hour later after I left he quickly called me he said Pastor Wong 
Actually, he's not call me pastor, you know. He call me what, you know. Uh, if you understand uh, Cantonese, Wong Si Fu, uh, Master Wong, uh, Master Wong, uh, Wong Si Fu, uh, Wong Si Fu. Uh. Okay, let me buy call me uh, uh, Si Fu, also okay, let me buy. Okay, <laughs> anyway, anyway, he said that Wong Si Fu, uh, you know, my uh, uh, sugar level, uh, sugar blood level actually has uh, decreased already. The doctor decided to do the operation upon me. So praise God, you know. So this is, once again, he encountered with a miracle, miraculous God. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. So even though the high blood the glucose, the, the issues is very bad, but somehow because of the Lord, he do something marvel. Allow me to share with you further about the story of my uh, daughter recently. I was invited to preach in the uh, FGA main church. Yeah, I think you will be aware that the FGA church in, in the uh, Kuchai Lama, the side, I was invited to preach there. And then the, in the same day, you know, the car accident just uh, happened to my daughter who stayed in Taiwan, you know, not stay in here. Because now she's studying in the contemporary music in Taiwan University. And her, ma her motorbike was knocked off, you know, by a car, crossed over the channelizing line. You know, channelizing line is like the, the line like here. This is called a channelizing line. Okay, crossover. Actually, it's, uh, you know, they off offend the law. My daughter, actually, at the time was riding a motorbike, just come back from the part time job. From, she's working in the Domino uh, shop. And then was then you know after uh, the, during the break time she wants to come back. So just uh, ten minutes before she reached her home, and then she got another accident. Wow, it's very bad. You know, I was so excited because in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, FGA preaching, wow, many people comes out and they want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. A lot of them, you know, they they say they want to repent for all the, the things, the sins, and then somehow just one hour later. What wow, the accident just happened to my daughter. So you see that uh, a lot of things will be happening in the spiritual realms. So even though uh, we may be, you know, in the victor side, but sometimes the uh, you know, devil you know, try to, you know, hit us, to bang us, you know, from the other side. So we have to, the church, as a church, we have to watch over you know, each one of you, uh, you know, one another. So the motorbike was knocked off by the car, crossed over the channelizing line, and she experienced four times of surgery four times of surgery after the critical motorbike accident and the fractures happened to her foot, to her palm, and to her elbow. Wow, as a father, you know, it's really cut into my heart. Wow, I feel very bad today. Even though I feel victor, you know, in the preaching, but some of the things happened to, to my daughter. Uh, I quickly sent my wife back to Taiwan because, you know, uh, I just don't want my daughter to be feel lonely when she faced, uh, you know, the accidents, uh, so bad of the accident. And then, you know, this is what happened to her, you see. Uh, it is, you know, she was uh, put into the ICU. So the times that we are really, uh, I feel very, I feel very hurt in the time. How come, you know, even the devil just uh, throw some words to me, he was saying that, yes, you are serving the Lord. Why you are facing all the things? Because uh, all the, the uh, all the issues that you know, because you have got bad things uh, like this and like that, they begin to judge me, they begin to condemn me. Wow. So during the time, I begin to cry out to the Lord, Lord, if I got anything to sin against you, convict me, Lord. The Lord says it's nothing to do with you. It's because of you, the spiritual warfare has taken place. You know, have been run. And you are under attack of the spiritual, of the dark force there. So the injuries and the trauma, you know, my, my daughter happened that, the, you know, in the accident ICU. And then treatment to the injuries is about, you know, the, uh, a very big of the steel plate being embedded to the left palm. And there was a screw in to hold up the broken middle finger and the artificial skin artificial skin but being grafted to the thumb of her left foot. Wow, it's a very bad. She is just uh, 21 years old, and very young of the, you know, uh, university students. However, tidings encountered Jesus. I said it again. She encountered Jesus personally. Even though the father 
is a is a pastor, is a missionary, but she cannot rely on the father's heavenly father. She has to totally show her hundred hundred percent of dependence upon her heavenly father. Amen. Father, you know, heavenly father only has a son. He doesn't have have the grandson. You are, we are all his son. We are all his daughter. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, however, tidings my my daughter's name encounter Jesus and an angelic intervention on night after her second operation. And here is her testimony. Okay. So the testimony, she said, "Hello, everyone," because she is not here. I share the you know the testimony on her behalf. I'm Titus Wang. I just experienced an incredible miracle at about 12:30 in the morning of April 23rd. At that time, I had already fallen asleep, and suddenly I feel, I first felt a flow from my left hand to my right hand, and then I felt someone to lift my hand. Who is someone? <laughs> Jesus is the one, you know. So she felt there was someone lift her hand, and very gently, I felt that my left hand was being lifted and opened the five fingers, begin to open the five fingers of my hand. And then Jesus began to help me and put it in a very comfortable position. And then helped me lift my right hand to a very comfortable position so that I can sleep peacefully. I clearly feel the Lord Jesus led the angel together. I got up and I came to my side. You know, so I kept praying, asking the Lord Jesus to use me, you know, to heal me. Wow. And although I asked about the name of Jesus and angels, Jesus didn't answer him and answer her straight away. But I still believe that they came to protect me. So, so I don't have to be afraid of my illness. I, I, be, I believe in the, the Lord Jesus and I put myself in the hands of the Lord Jesus. When I opened my eyes, I was able to sit up by myself. You know, after the, the accident, she is not able to sit up. But after the angelic intervention, you know, she was quickly healed. And she was able to uh, sit, uh, sit up and begin to make a phone call to me. You know, during the, uh, the time, it's only one, roughly around 1 a.m. now. You know. As a father, I was at 1 a.m. because she just had an accident. Maybe something very bad happened to her. But somehow, she, you know, she was shared with me during the phone call with the tears running down. Wow, I, was, I said, what happened to you? He said, because Jesus came to heal me, to help me. Wow, I feel the gentleness of Jesus Christ. I feel the power of the Holy Spirit in a very personal manner. This is what Jesus loved me. She called me. He called me. I, you know, by the moving Holy Spirit, I was able to share with her that you are, you are one day, you know, you are going to testify before the 10,000 of the people. You are going to, in front of many crowds, you are going to share the gospel to many of the people who yet to know Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So she said that, see, not to worry about me now. She said, dear friends, not to worry about me now. Because the true and living Lord Jesus Christ is by my side watching over and protecting me. Glory to God who loves me. Hallelujah. You know, uh, because the doctors still have to, you know, after that, they found out they still got the other part of the fractures. You know, so, begin to hold her up with the, like, the, the, you know, the support. So, this is what happened to her, you know, compared with the first photos, you know, the smiling face, totally different. Praise God. Huh? So, praise the Lord. Uh, so, I think today, I just come to the conclusion. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah chapter 40. So, taking time, dear brothers and sisters, to wait upon the Lord is not easy. But essential for believers to bring a renewing strength and vitality into every area of your life. So egos are like large birds, strong and muscular, with a power, powerful hooked, uh, uh, hooked beaks and the sharp talons, and uh, they are often referred to as the king of the old birds. Uh, there are several key traits we can learn from egos. 
Can we read together? Strong and powerful. Secondly, excellent vision. Thirdly, fearless and agile. And thirdly, resilient and determined. Then, faithful to their mates. Strong parents' instincts. Can we just arise on feet? We just uh, can we worship the song together? Can we ask just now the the, uh, the brother who will lead us into the tangible worship to come to the stage and uh, sing the song of worship songs? I think the last two worship songs uh, just now will really stand the tangible presence of God. So, dear uh, my dear African brothers, you are our brothers in the Christ. I welcome you to Malaysia. Even though I'm a foreigner, Orang Asin. Saya Orang Asin. Okay. But actually, praise God, we are all brother and sister together. Hallelujah. Can we sing the worship song together? Can they worship here from here? Oh, oh. 
Come on, continue to pray in towns. Continue to pray in towns. The Lord has us to pray unceasing prayer. To continue to build up the throne. To enthrone Him. Now is the time to enthrone the Lord. To enthrone the Lord, the Father God, the Father Son, the Father Holy Spirit. God of Holy Spirit. God of Holy Spirit, come and minister to all of us. Hallelujah. Can we just stretch out our arms and welcome the Holy Spirit? Welcome the great I am. Welcome the unction of the Lord to come and minister to each one of us. Hallelujah. So called the Lord, the Lord, we usher in your presence. He cut up a low cut up a whole cut up a hand that he cut up a whole cut up a that you cut up a father you come come and minister to us hallelujah cause us to encounter you in a personal manner so Korean that about you Korean that about saturate saturate your word your spirit your unction will come and reside in all of this he cut up a low cut up a hand that he cut up a hand that all cut up a hand that you brought in the sisters. Let me just do some of the prayer here. Firstly, do we have any daily walk with the Lord? Do we wait upon the Lord constantly? Sometimes, you know, we are so busy with so many things. We become so impatient. We don't even have the time to do the devotion, to wait upon Him. Just not the Scripture has already revealed to us. As we wait upon the Lord, we continue to soar up like an eagle. Are you willing to become an eagle? Eagle like a Christian. Hallelujah. To cross any of the bondages, cross only the limitations. You may have some of the limitations physically or even spiritually. But as you cry out to Him, the unction of the Lord is right here. The Lord will bring us, let's continue to, right now I can sense that the, now is the time for you to rest in the Spirit. Rest in the Spirit. Sometimes we try to strive, try to struggle with many things. Sometimes due to some of the differences, challenges that financially, family wise but the Lord has once again called us to rest in Him to rest in Him I've been preaching in many places I've been very so busy in the different places but some of the Lord just one day called me you have to rest in me deeper and deeper I say I'll raise rest in you he said not enough rest deeper rest deeper Hallelujah. Rest if it doesn't mean that we fall asleep. 
but we have tangible following Him. We can sense His tangible presence and His loving hand. Loving hand is carrying us. One time, as I was praying, just during the Holy Communion time, I sensed the big hand of Jesus Christ just reached out to me. I saw the vision. He was crucified on the cross. And the blood just coming down, flowed down upon me. And during the time, I feel that I'm a rich man. I'm a rich man. I'm sinners. Lord, forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Ever since that moment, my life is not the same again. Even though I've been a preacher, pastor for so many years. But the Lord called me to reconcile with him. Because, you know, I some of the issue with the Lord. But the Lord said, come. Let's solve the conflicts in between you and me. The Lord said, calling me in a very gentle voice. Now the Lord is calling you. Now he's calling you. The Lord said, you are my dear daughter. But sometimes we feel so inferior. Some of us feel so inferior. We feel so rejected. But now is the time the Holy Spirit to minister to each one of you. Even He is touching me so that I can minister to you. The loving hand of the Lord is upon you. Even one time, you know, I can feel that at home. The Lord Jesus Christ just passed by me, he just patted my shoulder. I can just feel the gentle touch from him. I can feel that the, this is the, the personal touch with Jesus Christ. Not just through my personal devotion. But this is straight away, I was lifted up from the pit. I was caught up in the pit. But the Lord said, I want you to lift you up. Hallelujah. Continue to pray like my daughter at the time when she encountered angelic intervention. Jesus Christ came to her help. Even the father, her physical father is not around, but the heavenly father is her timely help to come and minister to her. She cries with the tears running down. Hallelujah. Rest in the spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, did you encounter Christ and Holy Spirit in a personal manner? Did the Holy Spirit ever convict you or deliver you from bondages or guide you into all the truth or empower you with various prayers? You know, one time, when I was preaching in a, a service, after that, the many people come to front. I begin to pray for them. And one of them, you know, I'm not wearing actually it's a Korean. Suddenly, you know, I was moved by the Holy Spirit to pray in towns. And the towns is well accepted, well understood by that particular Korean brother. I was speaking in Korean, you know. I can't even understand by myself. But after the prayer, he said, Pastor, have you learned the Korean before? No, I said, I don't know how to speak Korean. I only know how to say Tamsamida. It's a very, very simple words only. Other than that, I know nothing about Korean words. But you are prayer for me 
in Korea. You know, the Lord can enlarge our spiritual capacity. Not only just because I'm a pastor, the Lord can use any ordinary man. You really can be, really make a difference in your community. Amen. You can serve the Lord in such kind of way so that the Lord can, you know, to bring you to a new, I can say that in this church, the Lord will bring you into a new season, a new height, new dimension. But somehow you have to be quickened. You have to really attentive to the voice of the Lord. Yes, many of you all have been attending a regular service. I call it a regular. It's become a routine. So other brother, just on you are leaving worship. It's not just a physical dancing. It's a spiritual transformation. May the Lord's unctions come. Minister to all of us. Can we just raise our hands? Cry out to Him, Hallelujah, for the more of Him, for the intimacy of Him. The great I am, the power come from on high, come from on high. Holy Spirit, come and minister to us to enhance, so to empower us, to convict us even. And in anyhow, any things we fall short of your glory. Let this land, Lord, become a holy land. This land will be set apart as a holy land. Like Moses encounter the presence of God. He even take off his shoes. <coughs> Can we just uh, practice a prophetic act? If it's okay with you. If you're uh, not comfortable with that, I think it should be okay. You take off, you take off your shoes. We just kneel down before the Lord. Jesus. This is a place whereby we are set apart. We are set apart. We are set apart. Father, send your power of vitality. Send your power of regeneration. Send the power of revival. That the things are even greater happens in the Asbury College. Can we continue to pray? The wave of revival has hit the Asbury College. Take a loss of 24 hours of prayer. Build up the altar. Just because of this, the ordinaries of a chapel service. After that, the, the revival just hit the ground. In the hundreds of thousands of college students just uh, comes in, just uh, packed in the place. The small town, small town is packed with the people. He cut up behind that. The small town, like uh, Saranban, will be packed with the people. Sakada Bahanda. Father, we are desperate for your presence. Hallelujah. We are eager and thirst for your love to come. Lord, to come to this little town. So Kada Bahanda Lava Kokada Bahanda. Suko Yanda Daba Seka Daba. Yokoda Baba Bahando Daba Seka. Yanda Toko. Yanda Bahanda.
Allow the Spirit to minister to you. Allow Him to touch. He could lead you on the difference of the direction. Allow Him to direct you. The heart of the kings is in the hand of the Lord, and He will direct the water course accordingly. He will direct the water course. I can't even imagine the Lord bring me on all the way from Taiwan to Malaysia. I can't imagine during the days, you know, Sarabahandara. I thought I had my future. Yes, I will be, do, I'll be as the professional you know, in the United States. But somehow the Lord changed my course. He charted my new journey of me. Father, we acknowledge your sovereignty. Your lordship, your kingships. Over in Saramban, life is happening. And even beyond. That your spirit continue to go out, extend your glory out of the four walls of the sanctuary here. Lord, I pray, O oh God, your tangible presence will be sensed by the even with the workplace people Amen. even outside down there they will sense your presence lord Amen. father i pray for the downfall pray for the outpouring of the holy spirit outpouring the holy spirit that you will be done your word and your work will prevail Amen. prevail against the power of the darkness Amen. Thank you. All we ask in Jesus, wonderful name. We say it together. Amen. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thanks for coming for this Sunday, uh, Sabbath worship uh, celebration. The meeting is over. You do any request or any prayer request can come for our Pastor Paul Huang. You pray for you. Otherwise, may the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and continue with us until the second coming of Christ. And brothers and sisters, tomorrow, next Sunday, the same time, same place, come. Do come because we are in the end times. There's no time to waste. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to dry us, to, uh, to lead us.